commitment to our purpose of life. And when we talk about commitment, it's a state of being dedicated to an activity, to a cause. That's when we talk about commitment. It's being dedicated. It's like your whole life, it's your whole life depends there, and you put all your energy, you put all your feelings, the whole you, you put into that, into that cause, and you work on it. And the question I would start as to, we can ask ourselves, what is our purpose as young people? You as in, an individual, what is your purpose of life? If, if you, someone comes to you, what's, what's your purpose of life? What will you say? As we have said that commitment is, is a dedication to a cause or, or an activity. If someone then asks you, what's your purpose of life as an individual? Then, what you, should, what you should come up with is you look at in your life, what are you so much dedicated to, to doing? It can be a good thing, it can be a bad thing. There are people who are really dedicated to a bad life, into drugs. There's another person who is dedicated to, to we, can, we can say, a good life. Someone is dedicated, let me talk of, you are a student, you are dedicated to, to your life, and you are, you are dedicated to that moment, that is education. So there are two ways. It can be, you can be dedicated in things which can destroy your life, you can be dedicated on things that enhance, that bring satisfaction to your life. So either way, if we are dedicated to things that are destroying our lives in, in some level of our development, we were looking for happiness, we were looking for contentment, we were looking for realization. So maybe in the process of development, friends can derail, derail us in our, in our way of living. That's why we are dedicating ourselves to, or committing ourselves to things that are destroying us. So, as young people, and the reason we are meeting here is because we are Christians. I believe there is no one who is a pagan here. So, everybody has been baptized. Yes, I've heard that we are of different denominations here, but the basis of it all, we are all Christians. So it doesn't matter which denomination you are, you are but we, are, we have a common purpose here. It's Christ who has brought us here. That is the motivation of our coming here and our meeting. So Christ is in our midst and is, is fellowshipping with us. So it's good time to challenge each other. So, the purpose of life, when we have purpose of life, purpose guides us. Purpose shapes us, our decisions and our everyday activity. The purpose that we have in life influences us, influence our behavior, and they shape our goals, and we have a sense of direction. So, whatever purpose you have in life, we know that there is a direction you are following. And as I've stated earlier, if the, the purpose that we have is destroying us, let's take an example. We are into drugs. We are into, we are into the pleasures of this world. Then, those are the things that direct our lives. Those are the things that shape our behavior. Those are the things that shape our goals. And there are, I would take an example of the Prime Minister of Singapore by the name Lee Kwan. Singapore is one of the developed countries right now in Asia. 
And we can say that the statistics show that Singapore and Kenya were in the same level in terms of development. And during the reign of this prime minister of, of Singapore, it is credited that during his time, that's when Singapore grew and developed. And right now, we can't compare Singapore and Kenya. So in terms of development, but before we were in the same level, or even maybe they were a little bit lower than us. But now, Singapore is on another level as compared to Kenya. And the reason why Singapore is developed is, is higher than Kenya right now is just because the different kind of leadership that Singapore had, the kind of commitment the prime minister of Singapore had, and we are, we are all Kenyans, and we can question ourselves, however young we are, and we look at how our leadership is, and we say, how, how we can gauge our leadership and say, how is it? How is it? Everybody has got him. We have all, our, all of us an ability to look at our leadership and say, is that the kind of life we want to, to live? Is that the kind, of, the kind of country that we have? Many of the countries right now, their, their primary focus is to, to, to see that the people are safeguarded from COVID-19. I will give an example of Morocco right now. Morocco right now, they, are, it is, they have given a decree that every citizen is going to get free vaccine. The vaccine will be free. So what about our own country? What is our focus right now? I'm just, I'm just throwing a question to you so that you, all of us, we can think, we can decide to see what kind of leadership we have. What do we have right now? What is our focus as a country in the midst of the pandemic? And, and people are dying. People are sick. What are our leaders channeling their energy to? So we get back to the prime minister of Singapore. He was asked one time that, how come that you are dedicated, you did not give up amidst criticism, amidst challenges that you faced. But the answer that he gave, he said that it's a lifelong commitment. It's a lifelong commitment. So for him to channel all his energy, for him to decide that this is the reason I'm waking up every morning, is to see that my country develops. As a prime minister, this prime minister had all the energy, had all the apparatus, maybe to divert the resources of the country to his own, pack, to his own pocket and make his family the richest in the world. But what, what was he committed? He was committed to the needs of his people. He was committed to the needs of not only those who are living, but also for the future generation. Because we are talking right now generations and generations. Singapore as a country, not only those who are living will enjoy the commitment of the prime minister, but also those who will be born, those who will come in the future. They will enjoy the commitment of this prime minister. So we want us ourselves to check our lives. How are we committed to our purpose of life? How are we committed? Remember, the commitment we take right now is not only for our own sake, but for, those, for also those who are around us and for our future generation. If our commitment right now is a commitment that will destroy us, so the purpose that God has brought you on this earth for you to serve, you have failed. So you have failed God. We have failed God when we don't live to a correct purpose that God has given us on this earth. The main focus 
of our life is that we want to live a life that is realized, a life that is fulfilled, and at the end of it all, we say that we may be satisfied. When someone asks us, what's your purpose of life? Others will say, I want to be happy. I want to be happy in life. I want to be prosperous. I want to be many things we can point out. You can have success, you can have prosperity, but without God, without Jesus, that kind of happiness is not long lasting. But a person who, who has Christ as the center, as the main, as, as where he is anchored, he or she is anchored, as Christ in, the, in, in, his, in his or her life, then when we say that we want happiness, when we say that we want prosperity, it is what is the basis of our moving out to seek for happiness. It is in Jesus that we find happiness. It's in Jesus that we find truth, what we pursue, what we pursue in life. So the central reason or where we can say that from where we can be anchored, it's in Christ. It's from there that we can when we move out, then the, the happiness that we have, it's not determined by things. You know that people who are happy because they have, they, have, they, have, they have something. Something has come into them. They're happy. What about when things don't come? Then we are not happy. There are people who want to be prosperous. You can be prosperous in a wicked way, in a wicked way, but you'll never have peace. Every time you are, you will be thinking, I will be caught. Every time we'll live with the guilt, I have, I have, I have achieved this wealth, this prosperity out of wickedness. So every day, every day we live with the guilt. Right now, I would say the prime minister of, of. Um, of Singapore, this Lee Kwan, right now he should be satisfied. Even if maybe he's not a billionaire in life, but there is contentment in him because the purpose that he wanted to live is a lifelong commitment. He's contented. So it's, it's high time for us also to check ourselves. What is the purpose that we are living? Is it really? A, a commitment that we can say you will be contented. Will you be satisfied at the end of it all? So it's a high time for us to, to check the commitment we have and the kind of purpose we have in life. I would say that we have stated that Christ is the center of our life. Christ is the basis of us moving and living a life that is realized as Christians, a life that is full of contentment and satisfaction. But there are some other facets, I can say, the small purposes, small purposes in life that enhance us to live a life that is fulfilled, a life that is of satisfaction, a life of true peace, and these small purposes or facets, they are there in, in life. Those are the small facets we will say that they anchor us. When we are traveling from Nairobi to here, in the road there, our main focus we wanted to reach, we have come here today. I don't know, from Narumoru to here, I was not very observant on the road there to see if there's rails by the, by the roadside, I believe that there must be rails because to come here, there's a lot of meandering and the road is not very clear, as in very straight. So, there are rails, rail guards. I don't know, they are called rail guards. So, these, these rails are there to, to help the driver Okay, so that someone may not go 
as in stray from the road, just to direct the driver to make sure that you don't get past the road lest you have an accident. So the same way in life, we have a common, we have, we have, we have a specific focus to reach. We have our final destination we are looking up to. So our traveling from Narumori to here, there are those, our focus was to reach here. But there are these guards, we rail guards beside the road, just to give us caution, just to, to ensure that we reach here by, by us being observant. So even in our lives, we have our purpose. We want to live a life that is realized. We have, want to live a life that is satisfying. But there are fa other facets that we, we are living every day. We are students. Some of us, I believe, we are all young people over here. And you are, you are studying. And the studies that you are having right now, those are the facets that enhance you to live a life that will enable you to reach a life that is fulfilling. So if we don't take these, the small facets, if we don't watch these small facets that we have in life that enhance us living a life that is fulfilled, then our focus of life Will we reach really to a fulfilled life? Will we really reach to a fulfilled life, a satisfied life? The most likely we won't, we won't reach to a fulfilled life. So is, it is it's a lifelong commitment and considering these small facets that we have in life and taking them seriously, we can be it's a time for us to study. But if we don't take our studies seriously, our purpose then will be jeopardized. We won't feel really satisfied. If we are not committed Christians, then our main focus, which is to live a life that is fulfilled in Christ, will not be realized, will not be fulfilled. So. These small facets we need to check. Whatever small facets that we have in life that will enhance us to live a life that is fulfilled, we have really to take seriously about them. They are not just there for the sake of being there. They are there to direct us. It's also a moment for us to check. It's a moment for us to check how are we living our life. Because at the right, this, this time, we are, we are living at these small facets so that we may realize a, the bigger picture, the whole picture of that is a life that is fulfilled. So these small facets, are we loving them? Do we, do we love these small facets in life that we may feel realized at the end of it all? So this comes, maybe this is the time for us to reflect what we are doing. Are we really loving what we are doing? Are we really enjoying? Are we really enjoying? Some of us, we are, maybe we have finished secondary. Maybe some of us, we are in secondary. But no, when you're in secondary, you have to choose the, the subjects you want to do. You, if you are not, if, if you, at the end of it all, you are not targeting to be, to, be, to be a medical practitioner. If you are not targeting that, will you decide that you want to do the sciences? Will you, will you choose that just because you want to, just because it is, it's, it's luxury, it's like you, you will be the pompous of the, of the, of the school, no? We choose, for example, the subjects we do in secondary because this is where we feel we are realized. This is where we feel that we are comfortable. This is where we feel that we are at home. That is it. But unfortunately, right now, as young people, some of the, some of the parents, 
they don't consider where we feel that we are at home. Your parent maybe will tell you, I want you to do sciences. I want you to do, to be a medical practitioner. And maybe you are not at home with the, being a medical practitioner. Maybe, maybe you want to be a poet in life. You want to do writing. That's where you feel comfortable. So the small facets, we are looking at the small facets in life. Those are the things that we need to consider. Are we at home with them so that we may realize the bigger picture of being fulfilled in life? So I want us to look. How can we, how can we identify our purpose in life? How can we identify our purpose in life? How can we identify our purpose in life and live with? I would mention four ways how we can identify our purpose in life and we can live them. One way is to identify the reason why you are living. Why you are living. The first way is to identify the reason why you are living. It's a question that anybody we can be asked, why are you living? Why are you living? You know, someone can be some of us, we, we exist. There's a difference between existing and, and living. B existing is you, you, are not, you are not control of your life. You are just there. You umejipata hapo, umezaliwa sawa, unangoja kufa. So, that is, you are just existing. But living, umezaliwa, you put all your energy to being realized. You put all your focus to being realized, being yourself, enjoying your life, and being satisfied with it. That is a, that's living. So why are you living? That's the question, that's the first way we can, for us to find our purpose. Why are we living? Maybe we need every day to write down the activities, the topics that we love, and the things that we are good at, and also our weaknesses. And also our weaknesses. In writing, in writing down what we love, in writing down the activities that we say that we enjoy doing, that points to, our, to your purpose of life. That points to a purpose of life. Because if you, if you do things that you don't love, if you do things that you don't enjoy, that does not bring the best out of you, then you, are not live, you will not be able to live. You are not living your purpose. You are not living. There is very much energy that you will be using. In fact, the, the results that will, will, at the end of it all, will not be results that we can say, maybe they are saying, we can say just satisfactory. Just satisfactory. But if you live your purpose, you are excellent in what you are doing, in, in the purpose that you are living. It's very evident that many of the people in this country they are living a life that not really they are, they are meant to, to live. I will take an example of military. For you to get to military, you don't just get to military because now you have, you have failed in school, now I think I would be shikilia. Watch, watch and you end the military too. 
No. There are people who are like born to be in military. People who are proud of being a military person. They enjoy. They feel, okay, I feel realized here. When they go out, they defend the country. When they go wherever, they, they, they serve their country with passion. But if you have just gone there just to, to seek employment, you have gone there just to seek, just to hold on somewhere, at the end of it all, we will never have military men that are passionate about their country. We will not have military men that are passionate about service. So identifying what you love, what you enjoy, will, re will lead to you living a life that is fulfilled, a life that is satisfying. And identifying your weakness is a, is a way for you to know where to bring others. Collaboration. Collaboration. You will do your part where you feel that you are weak, where you feel that you, 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 are, you are not best at. Then you collaborate others for you to fulfill your life, for you to live a life that is satisfying. So, first one, creating the reason why you are living. The second one is, is to deal with our fears, dealing with fear. Sometimes it can be overwhelming to achieve our purpose of life. When we try to achieve it, Sometimes we tell stories about what we can and we can't do. It's all because fear holds us back. Fear chokes our confidence. Fear destroys our confidence. I would say that Fear is the number one killer of confidence. When we fear, the outcome or a part of the process will never move forward. But when we take an action, when we decide that this is one, what we want to do, this is what I want to achieve, then our confidence is increased. Most of us, we, would, we fear to venture into our next life, into the next step, because we fear. Fear holds us back. And then we are, every day we are, we are just stagnant. We are just stuck. Say, what will I do? It's just because of fear. Because of fear. Maybe there's something that you are struggling to let go, but because out of fear, because of fear, we can't venture. So, how to defeat fear is by taking a decision to, to do something. Taking that step will defeat fear. And the confidence will, will, just, will just get back to us. Maybe we need to look the kind of fear that we have in life. You have friends, people who don't, who don't care about church, the people who don't care, about, don't care about God. Most of the time we say, people who, who don't fear God or have regard for man. There are those people. They don't fear God, they don't have regard for man. So we, we might have such kind of friends. This kind of friends, they like, they hold us back. You, you are a Christian. You want to be a committed Christian. You want to be, to feel realized from the perspective of the, of the church. But some of our friends, maybe, they are not committed uh, Christians. Or after, maybe they are not Christians at all. They are kind of 
satisfaction, their kind of um, fulfillment they want is the fulfillment of the world. So you are, you are, you are there. What should you? They are trying to draw you out of the church. They want to draw you out of the commitment you have. You want to live as a Christian, and feel realized from, from being a Christian. They want to pull you, and sometimes, because of fear, what our friends will say about us, what our friends will talk about us. I say, my Leo, Leo. Jen amenda amenda leo chazi leo ni saa tu ni leo ni siku ya kujiachilia si ndio na my friends huko nakula happy leo wamejipanga mahali wanaenda despite despite kuna covid ndio wameamua pia wanakuja wanataka kujiachilia vile sisi tumejiachilia leo tumekuja hapa kwa Mungu God has brought us together so your friend anajua ah leo John amekataa kuenda kule happy kwa sababu hmm wamesemekana wame there is a meeting kwa church and sometimes fear we fear what our friends will say about us so that ne, kesho tukikutana <laughs> anasema ai bwana jana ilikuwa bwana ilikuwa kuzuri tulifanya hivi na hivi na hivi na wewe uko hapo so you are really divided <laughs> what is this hmm? fear holds us back what our friends talk about us what our friends think about us fear we fear but the thing is you have chosen the best part that is that is an assurance that i'm giving you so it is you to accept that assurance what i'm telling you you will never go wrong you will never go wrong by being a committed christian someone who loves god can god really allow you to to be destroyed really can god really allow you to be destroyed at upote 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 kabisa but the world out there unaza potea and you, you yani unakuwa sasa okay you, you yourself you might feel that okay i'm enjoying life but there's a lot of misery out there we don't say that when you are a christian that there are no challenges the challenges will be there but how you tackle at them how you look at them your perspective of looking at the challenges your perspective how to tackle the challenges that you face is different is different hmm? so fear dealing with fear fear that comes from what people think about us and fear from our own our own stories what we talk to ourselves So it's a process I would say maybe what is holding you back from living a life that is purposeful write down write down your your fears what are the fears that you have that that's holding you back from living a fulfilled life write down just jot down the kind of fears that you have when we write down the fears that we have then we look at where are the fears coming from and for us to deal with that kind of fear we look at the evidence that really fear shouldn't be the the reason for us to take a next step an example another person will look at 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 life like this or fear will hold him or her in this way we might say that oh how will my friends look at me they will laugh at me for following passionately what i want to do in life what i will do in life we are in school there it's time to choose the the subjects we want to do in in school secondary that's in at, at the end of secondary KCSC but because we have friends maybe they are doing a, they want to do different subjects they want to do different subjects many of your friends maybe they want to do arts the arts thing that's where they feel that 
they feel realized when they when they are when they are done with KCIC, when they go to university, where they feel they they feel realized, they want to go on the on the area of arts. But because your friends are doing that, and when you say, oh, my friends will laugh at me because I want to do sciences. But, but that's where you want, where you feel realized. People will say that you are crazy. Ah, where you are crazy, how can you do sciences? You see, what friends, what friends, when we think, what friends think about us. Hmm. So it's easier for us to give up on our purpose because we fear what our friends talk about us. So the way to deal maybe what people think about us, maybe you need to talk to yourself and say, I have a great family that support me in what I'm doing. I have, I have maybe there's someone who assures you that you, you are good in that. Give the evidence to that fear that you have. Say, you are not thinking what friends are going to tell you. They are not, you are not going to think that they are going to laugh at you. But when you have a firm purpose of saying, this is why I'm, I will feel realized, then it doesn't matter what, what people talk about. It doesn't matter what people feel about, but you feel passionate in what you are doing. The third way is to, to claim your values. Claim your values. Claim your values. What are the kind of values that we have in life? The kind of values in we have in life. Maybe it's high time for us to challenge ourselves. Do we really have the values? Oh, we are just here and there. We are unstable. We are unstable. We are unstable. For me to live as a brother, for me to live as a brother, I have to, there are values that I need to hold so dearly that I have to be persistent for me to safeguard my, my life as a brother. You as a young person, you need to have values, your own values, that you will hold them so dearly. Ndiyo, ndiyo mtu asikucheze. That is, maybe you have a value of saying this, this, I, this, this is the kind of value that I hold so dearly. Muta kwambi, ah, that's so a cake. Yo ni maisha kitambo. Maisha kitambo yo. Si marafiko na zikuambi yo. Yo ni maisha kitambo. You want to live with, for example, being honest. Being honest. But now the society right now, many people are not honest. Now that because people are not honest, should you also choose to be honest? Be, be that person that is different. Be that person that the, the world needs. People are not so honest. There's, there's a, lot of, a lot of corruption. A lot. But it's you to choose the kind of value that you want to hold. But many, if people, if many are not to what we can say, they don't have values. Christian values. The Christian values. What are the Christian values that we have? So when we claim our values that we have, when we claim our values, then it channels us to identifying our purpose. Being consistent in the values that we have. Consistency. It's one, one, one value that we can, you can... You can write down the values. Maybe the, the common values that we have. We can have. And then after writing the common values, then you look at what enhances your purpose in life. You, you narrow them down. So, let us look at the values that we have. Let Christ be the, 
be the center, be the one we can find our values, we can hold so dearly that will guide us to live that is a life that is fulfilling. The fourth one is you have to take action. Take action. Take action. The difference the difference between where we want to go and where we are is what we do. What we do. You might have desire. You might have the desire you want to go to. You. Let me take an example of us coming here. I might have, a, we had the desire to come here. We were looking forward to coming and meet you and share with you, to learn from you, to, to listen to you. If you would have not taken action, Nakumbuka father alikuwa anasema tutoke 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 tunachelewa You see We had the desire to come lakini kama we would have not taken action atunge 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 kuwa hapa sasa hizi Singekuwa nasimama sasa hizi hapa sharing with you So the difference of between where we want to go and where we are is what we do what we do if you want to decide to just sit there, you will remain there and be stagnant and you will complain all your life. Hakuna mtu atakuja kushika mkono hivi atakwambia you want to go to you want to go to Nairobi. Nikudi nikushike mkono nikupeleke. No. It is you to decide to make a choice to say I want to go to Nairobi. Utoke hapo, uende na Rumuru station, unataka kupanda train kupeleka Nairobi am wende wende nyeri upande so you will just find people who will facilitate you are going but kuna mtu atatoka atoke nyeri at because you have the desire to go to Nairobi wewe oh, umekaa kwenye at Nissan huko itoki kuje kwenye kupeleka Nairobi no that's a lie nobody hata kwanza huyo mtu atajua aje at you want to go to Nairobi utajua aje hmm? I remember one time we went to to Samburu. So ukifika Marala that time it was njia kutoka Marala to Nyahururu. It was like a quarter of it it was tarmacked. Hiyo njia hiyo ingine yani ni ni rough road ni vigumu. So the only way for you to get to Nyahururu mapema ilikuwa unaenda una book a night like like una unapanga kusafiri kesho una book gari leo unaambiana mali unalala mali yani mali unaishi so asubuhi saa tisa hivi watu wa Nissan wanapita wanasema ah kuna mmoja alikuwa amebuka anaishi pale kuna mwingine ana book so mna kolektiwa wote ndio mtoke mapema ndio mfike Nyahururu a little bit a little bit early because kuna watu wanatoka wakifika Nyahururu wanaendelea mpaka so the desire you want to go to Nairobi you no, amuta wezi tokea tu at anasema at you want to go to Nairobi no you have to inform i so those people who will facilitate i would say those are the collaborators of your life hmm? that will enhance you to live a life that is purposeful so taking action that's what we need to do in life. Maybe there's, there's something in life that we are struggling. We are struggling. There is, we, are, we are stuck. Not unless we speak to someone, we, we will never get help. We will never get pulled out from whatever hardship we are. So taking action involves you to make a decision to say, I want to get out of this. I want to get out of this misery. I want to get out of this, out of this, in, you are in between the rock. I want to get it out of it. Now, if we don't take action, then we will be stuck in that rock until we die. 
some of us, we are living already a life that is purposeful. Some of us. I look at myself, I don't, I, do, I don't see why I should change the life that I'm living right now. I don't see. I don't see any reason. I don't. So it's, it's high time for everybody to look. Kila muta jiangalia, seme, maisha nye mi naishi, maisha ambayo mi nafuraia. Kama ikufuraishi, then make the, change things, take action. If, you don't, if, if, you are not, if you are not living a life that is, you are happy about, then look for happiness. And we, we have said, where is that happiness? When you live a life that God has purposed you to live. Because the indicators of living a life that God really wants you to, wanted you to live, when you enjoy what you are doing, when you feel that you are, you have given your best, you are satisfied. That's the kind of life that God wanted you to live. But if you strain in what you are doing, you are the the results of what you are doing is not. You don't feel you are not happy about. Then you are not. You are living a lie. You are living a lie. There is the when you are satisfied with the life that you are living, then that you are living a life that God purposed you to live. So, for those who have a life that is, we can say they have not had that sense of direction, a purpose for living, a life that is satisfying, I want to challenge you, we start little by little. You cannot just state once to pa, and then your life has changed, and then you, no. It takes baby steps. Mtoto kizaliwa, it's like unajiangale sasa kama mtoto sasa. Umezaliwa, pole pole, you rely on others. You hang on others, you rely on others to help you to grow. Come on, Toto, too. You are in need. You cry, to, you cry to a friend, you cry to your spiritual leaders, you cry to your, to your guardian, you cry to your mom, you cry to, your, to say that I want to live a life that is whatever. You see, step by step. Then, after that, we find ourselves learning how to walk, learning how to walk, we'll find a way that we can walk and we get stronger day by day. We get stronger by day. So I wouldn't say that we live, a, our life will just change if in case our, our sense of life, our purpose of life, it's not satisfying, it's not fulfilling according to how we judge it or how the world judges is, is will just change from once. It takes steps by step, little steps, just like a baby learns to, to walk. So give yourself a time frame where you want to be in the, in the next, in the, in the maybe one year, two years, three years. Give yourself a time frame where you want to do, where you want to be, and take action. And with that, you will find your, your purpose in life. So that is, that is how you, if you want to know your purpose of life, our purpose of life, creating the reason why you want to live, dealing with your fear, taking action for you to, to find your, your purpose of life. So, for us to, after finding this purpose of life, how can we be, how can we remain committed to this purpose? So, how can we remain committed to the purpose of our life? What are the, the small, I call the small steps that, or oh, the different ways that we want to, to remain committed to our purpose in life. What, what are these every day? activity that we can take to say that we remain committed to our purpose. I would also mention four, four ways how to remain committed to our purpose. 
I call them small, small activities, everyday activities, to remain committed in life and to our purpose in life. First, write down, write down your, your purpose in life. Write down. You write down your purpose in life. In the first step we have said for you to realize your purpose in life, these four steps. When you have realized your purpose in life, write down your purpose in life. And your purpose of life is the reason why you are living. The reason why you are living. And have your goals with you. I mean, keep, keep them visible so that I know my purpose of life is, is to live a life that is satisfying, a life that is correspond, corresponding to what my call, to my call. For example, as a brother, what, what are the, why, the reason why I'm living as I live as a brother? I have to, I have, I've got my goals with me. I have them written down. And every morning, it's like, I, I look at them. I know when I wake up, I am a brother. I want to live every day as a brother. And what are the goals that I need to achieve at the end of it all? So this focuses my, my day when I look at them. So you can have your goals, you can have your, your purpose, but if you write down and then you forget, you will never, you, you, will, you might derail. Secondly, reviewing your goals consistently. Taking time to listen to yourself. Have moments of meditation, moments of silence, and look at the bigger picture of where you want to be, a full, a full picture of what you want to be in life. Already you have that as a purpose of life, the reason why you are living. You have it. Do we take time to review how we live our, our goals and whatever? So it's a challenge. If you are, you are not doing, start doing. Just take a moment, leave your phone, leave. It, it will not take, start with, start with five minutes, start with 10 minutes, start with 15 minutes, whatever time that you can give yourself. Just sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. Kuna watu wanazashika simu wanalala kama umeshika simu wa kicha TV. Nalala. Unapata simu imeanguka huko. So that means you never even had time to, to reflect, to have time to, to meditate and think about yourself. Just give that time of silence and review your goals. Review how you live your life. And the third step is hold yourself accountable for the actions you take, for the decisions you make. Even in difficult moments, you have to hold yourself accountable when, when you, find, you find yourself in a difficult moment. Because if you hold yourself accountable, then the, the, the solutions to, your, to the difficult moment that you are, you will find it deep down in yourself. It will come out from you. But if we, do, if we blame others, if we say that you are the cause of, maybe it can be a kwamba where someone can be part of our problem, why we are in a difficult situation. But if we blame all of it to another person, then the solution, it won't come from that person. That person and Andalina Mashiaki too. But if we hold ourselves accountable, say, what is, what is the part that I've done myself to get into this situation? Then the solution you find a solution to, to your life, to the problem that you have. And the last one, celebrate the milestones that you have reached. Celebrate. Kuna watu anapiga, wamepiga atua, enye wamepigia, but they don't know how to celebrate. They don't know how to say, go to the mirror and say, Eugene, you have, you have, you have, you have reached this milestone today. Mwambie, talk to yourself and say, Congratulations. Feel proud about the milestone that you have made. Hmm? Acknowledge your wins, your progress every day, however little they are. 
this motivates us. This motivates us. This motivates us. So when we appreciate the milestones that we have, however little they are, it motivates us to be to our purpose of life. Also, we, we should be very gentle to ourselves. Very gentle. And the text that I will give you so that you read at your own time as a typical example of someone who was committed to his life, to the purpose, is Nehemiah. Just read Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 1 to 9, and verse 15. It's a typical example. Nehemiah 6, 1 to 9, and 15. A good example of a person who remained focused amidst criticism and challenges. He was a man that was tasked to go and restore Israel. So he remained focused amidst the criticism, whatever the enemy is taunting at him. So even us, let us read that text and look at our own life. You will be taunted, you will be criticized for living a life that is fulfilling, that we say that Christ is the anchor of our life. People will joke about it, but let us take consolation. Let us get strengthened just like Nehemiah, because God will strengthen our hands just as he strengthened Nehemiah in our purpose of life. So thank you. If there's anyone who has a question, is he or she is invited to, to ask.